I'm like super blind, so let's do this. In Carrie the Book Bell's video about Booktube Spirit Week, she said we could do whatever we wanted, and so for Decade Day, I decided I would dress like Evie O'Neill and talk about books from the 1920s. So I've got two books that are from the 1920s, like originally published in the 1920s. I've got three books that were written about the 1920s, and as a special treat, I have three books that I own that were actually physically published in the 1920s. So let's talk about them. The very first book on our books that were written in the 1920s list is an obvious one. It's The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, I read a little summary of it because I think it's funny. Nick, always the side character and never the main, tells the story of Daisy and Jay Gatsby and the vices and virtues of the Roaring Twenties. I have actually not read this book. I'm going to read it for class this semester, but it is apparently a wild ride. People die in pools and get hit by cars, and white rich people are just genuinely awful. So nothing we didn't already know, and nothing has changed since the 1920s. The next book is another one I have not read, and while it was written in the 1920s, it is about World War I. It is A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway, and this one tells the story of an American ambulance driver in World War I in Italy who falls in love with an English nurse. It's Hemingway, so it's probably super depressing. Next are the three books that are written about the 1920s. First is Wiley Cash's The Last Ballad, which is actually based on a true story about a mill strike in Gastonia, North Carolina in 1929. It tells the story of Ella Mae Wiggins, who was a single mom who eventually becomes the voice of a union strike. It's actually very good, but ends very sad because it is based on a really sad, real event. But on the plus side, this book is signed. The next book is another one that I have not read, but got because it's beautiful. It's The Gallery by mm, Laura Mary Fitzgerald. Again, I'm super blind right now. This one I also read a summary of since I haven't read it. Mystery based on real life events. A 12 year old kitchen maid named Martha investigates strange things in the house of a newspaper magnate and his secluded heiress wife. Um, it is apparently really good. People love this book, but I got it because it's gorgeous. Last but not least, and of course I would include this, it's The Diviners by Liva Bray. This features a group of teenagers with powers, or diviners, solving mysteries in New York City in the Roaring Twenties. It is super scary in places and really graphic and full of horror, but the representation is really good and the characters are fun. You grow way too attached to them. If you read the whole series, you will find out that that is a really bad thing to be attached to the characters. I'm going to get a bit closer to you for the next three because these three books were published physically in 1920s. The first one I have is Middlemarch by George Eliot, which is actually not George Eliot. It is actually Mary Ann Evans, a female, wrote this book. This book I got at a thrift store. Look, it's got writing in it. It's got a gorgeous title card page with all these like beautiful drawings on it. And it says, and I can't read because I am blind, it says it was published and copyrighted in 1926. So this particular book was published in the 1920s. The next book can't decide when it's published. It actually doesn't say it. And research shows me it's either in the 20s or the 30s, but it's The Adventures of Oliver Twist. I picked this one up from a secondhand bookstore. It has a nice little embossing on the cover, but you can't see it because my camera quality is shit. It also has a cute title page. And I believe then most research shows, see that's where it should say when it's published, it was published in 1929. It was either published in 1929 or the early 1930s, but either way we're going to count it for this video. Last but not least, we have one of my favorite books that's in my rare books collection, and that's The Works of Maupassant. It's a collection of short stories, and this one is very old and very brittle, so I have to be very careful when I move it. There's a picture of the author and the title card. It was published in 1923. It has a ribbon bookmark. I don't use it because it's very brittle. I would probably destroy it. And I have better copies that I can physically use of this, but his short stories are so good when I saw this, I had to have it at a thrift store. Thrift stores are a great place to find books that you wouldn't normally get that are very, very old. I hope you enjoyed this very short video. I want you to know that I'm very authentically dressed, not just that I have this dress on that actually is a queenie dress from Hot Topic, you know, from Fantastic Beasts, but I'm also wearing thigh highs rolled down to my knee because Evie would absolutely roll them to her knee and shoes to match. 
because I am very much in character. I have a coin necklace. I am proud of this look. I don't know if you know this. But anyway, you should read the books I mentioned, even though I haven't read all the books that I mentioned. Definitely read The Diviners, though. If you're in 2020 and you want to read a 20s-based book, then The Diviner series is really the way to go. It's young adult, but it deals with some very dark themes, and the relationships between the characters are just so good. Uh, and now I'm going to go take all of this makeup off. Bye!